Hi everyone, let's talk about the power of a point theorem in geometry. First we need to define what the power of a point means. So let's say we have a circle, we're going to call it gamma, capital gamma, and let's say we've got a point P somewhere on the plane. Then what we do is that we take the center of the circle and we draw the line through these two points. So we've got the segment PO and what we say is that the power of P with respect to gamma is equal to OP squared minus the radius squared which then is equal to by difference of squares OP minus R times OP plus R so notice that OP plus R is this segment here and OP minus R is equal to this segment here. So really what we're doing is that we're taking the first part of the segment and we're multiplying it by the whole second segment from P to the other end. So that is called the power of a point P, but that's not the theorem in itself, that's just the definition. What the theorem says is that there are three cases. Let's, let's draw three diagrams here, because they're going to correspond to the cases. The first one, we've got P as an exterior point which cuts through the, tr the circle in a couple of spots. Let's call them X and Y. The second case, P is an interior point, and there's a line segment that cuts through the circle at two spots again, so P and X and Y. And the final one is where we have P as an exterior point, but there's a line segment that's tangent to the circle. We're going to call that Z. So P and Z. So here we have an exterior point and a secant. Here we have an interior point and a chord and here we have an exterior point and a tangent. And what we have here is that the PX times PY is equal to the power with respect to gamma of P. In the second case we have PX times PY is equal to the negative of the power with respect to gamma of P. And in the final case we have PZ squared, so it's sort of like a limiting case of the first one. PZ times PZ is equal to power of gamma with respect to P. So that's that's what the power of the power of a point theorem says. And unlike pretty much all of our other videos. I'm not going to prove this. I know proof by uh, doing casework and, and that uses similar triangles and a very nice proof that uses complex numbers but both would take up too much time. What instead I'm going to do is show you the various cases that show up because the theorem is a bit abstract and the practical cases are different. Here's what the practical cases say. There are, there are three cases. So let's draw three circles again. What the practical cases say is that if we have two intersecting chords and not necessarily intersecting in the center, we're going to call the intersection P, then they have a common value. By they I mean a certain uh, expression. So hold on a second. This is AB and this is CD. 
So PA times PB is equal to PC times PD. And the reason is that the common value is the power with respect to gamma of P. So that comes up often. The second case that comes up often is where we have an external point and two secants. Let's call this P and this point here A and this B and this one C and this one D. Then in this case again we have PA times PB is equal to PC times PD. And once again, the common value is, oh sorry, back here, um, it's negative, negative power of gamma of P. That's the common value. Over here though, the common value of is power uh, with respect to gamma of P. And the final case that we have is where we have one secant and the other is a tangent. So we're going to call this P, A, B, and C. And what we have is P, A times P, B is equal to P, C squared. And once again, the common value is the power with respect to gamma of P. So those are the cases that come up in practice of the power of a point theorem. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.